Hello and welcome to our practice problems on singular value decomposition SVD uh, chapter 16 in our practical linear algebra book. Let's start with a simple sort of definitionally related question. For what type of matrices are the eigenvalues the same as the singular values? Even if you don't remember reading this in the book, uh, you can, might be able to reason this just from knowing how we compute singular values. So think, see if you can think of what the answer is. Okay, so hopefully you've recognized, and since computing the singular value, we're going to take the eigenvalues of the covariance matrices A transpose A and A transpose, that if the matrix is real and square and symmetric, then if it's real, square, and symmetric, then it has eigenvalues, and the eigenvalues are real. Um, and then when I square them, because I took A transpose A, I'm going to get the singular values, and they'll have the same magnitude. Uh, it has to be positive definite because we need all the singular values to be the same sign after we take the square root, otherwise we don't know which one to, to, to make them. So, so that gives us our definition uh, or relationship between singular values and eigenvalues. So now let's apply that in a real problem. Here's a very small matrix. A is a 2 by 2, 1, 0, 0, 4. Find the SVD for this matrix. Uh, pause, it, pause the video. Work on this until you actually have the answer for what is the singular value decomposition of the matrix. Okay, you're back. So hopefully uh, you start off recognizing that our matrix A and our single value decomposition is the product of three matrices, U, sigma, and B transpose, where U and V are orthonormal matrix and sigma is a diagonal. In fact, the columns of V are the eigenvectors of A transpose A, and the columns of U are the eigenvectors of A, A transpose, and that's true for any matrix. This is just the definition of what it is. So now, how do we go about forming that? Well, given that we know the relationship between the eigenvectors, we can first form by first form A transpose A. That gives us 1, 0, 0, 16. As a diagonal matrix, the eigenvalues are trivial, 16 and 1. And the corresponding uh, eigenvectors are 0, 1, 1, 0, sort of the opposite of where we get them from the, the matrix. And so our singular values are the square roots of the uh, eigenvalues. So that gives us 4 and 1. And our sigma matrix then is 4, 0, 0, 1. And uh, we can also now go to after U to form U. We do AA transpose, which because it's real and symmetric and square, we get 1, 0, 0, 16. We get the same result as we did for AA transpose, which gives us an identical construct. And now we can construct U equals V. And then we just remember when we put them all together that A is equal to U sigma V transpose, not V at the end, so it's V transpose. Okay, so now let's go do a slightly more complicated example. Um, let's ask, what is the pseudo-inverse of a matrix A? Pseudo-inverse, remember, is something that when we multiply it by A, give us something as close as we can in a least square sense to the inverse. Uh, I'm going to note that this matrix is actually a vector, so it's a very special case. Uh, and you can use SVD to solve this problem, if you remember how. So work through that, pause the video, and then come back as soon as you have your solution. Okay, so to form this, the first thing we do is we do A transpose A, uh, which in this case is just a dot product. We get the answer 4, which is a 1 by 1 matrix. Uh, the eigenvalue for this is 4, and the corresponding eigenvector is just the number 1. So V transpose is 1. Uh, next, to go after U, we form A, A transpose. So this gives us a much bigger matrix this time. It gives us the matrix of 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So um, this has eigenvalues of 4, 0, and 0. And the corresponding eigenvectors, the first one is 1, 0, 0. The other two are any arbitrary basis for the remaining L2 space, uh, so R2 space. But uh, we're just going to make them into the identity vectors. So then we get the identity matrix for U. Um, they form anything that forms a null space, though, would have been allowed, uh, as long as they're orthonormal. Uh, so the next step is to form our uh, singular value matrix, which is 1 half 0, 0 for our pseudo-inverse, and remember where our pseudo-inverse, we take the matrix uh, of the eigenvectors, and then we're going to take the inverse of that, so we're going to take one over them, uh, and so we had four, the square root of that was two, and so our first item here is one half, the other two are just zeros because we're, uh, we don't have any eigenvalues, and we don't actually take zero divided by zero, we just replace them with a zero. So our pseudo-inverse then is given by taking the uh, transpose after we've done the SVD with the pseudo-inverse element, so we get V sigma inverse, pseudo inverse, u transpose, um, which is just the vector 1 half 0, 0. And uh, if we go back and you multiply that 1 half 0, 0 with 2, 0, 0, you see you get 1. OK, 
Okay, so another problem uh, for the matrix shown here, uh, this three by three matrix, show that both uh, the two different ways we've talked about uh, estimating the determinant from eigenvalues and singular values result in the same absolute value of the determinant. Uh, so recalling uh, the equation 16.5, the, the absolute value of the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of the singular value matrix sigma, uh, which is just the product of singular values. And then the other way is that the determinant of A are the eigenvalues of A, uh, lambda 1 through lambda n, just their product. And this is true for square matrices, obviously, because it has eigenvalues. So work through, see if you can actually work out what that proof would look like. OK, so hopefully you've. Uh, work that out. Uh, since A is a diagonal matrix, this is really easy to get its eigenvalues. It's just minus 2, 1, 1. Uh, so the determinant, uh, according to 16.6, .6 is minus 2 times 1 times 1 is minus 2. To find the singular values, we need the eigenvalues of A transpose A, which is uh, this diagonal matrix. And of course, as a diagonal matrix, we can simply uh, look at that and get that the, the eigenvalues of that are 4, 1, 1. The singular values are therefore the square root. Uh, which is 2, 1, 1, which is 2. Therefore, they, we can see both of these give the same value for the absolute value of the determinant. This one is actually minus 2, this one's 2, but in absolute value sense, they're the same. Okay, now let's go use SVD to actually solve a problem. So what is the least square solution to the system AV equals B, where A is given by uh, this matrix and B is on this right-hand side? Uh, we're going to use the pseudo inverse and the steps enumerated in 16.6 .6 if you get stuck. Best if you can work through it without looking back in the book, but uh, if you have to, go ahead and look back. Uh, if you don't really want to compute the SVD, if you're comfortable that you can compute it, you can find the results in example 16.3 in the book, uh, but it's better, again, if you can just go ahead and compute them. So after you have that, let's look at the solution. So if I wanted to compute them again, I would take A transpose A, get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors from that to get me V, and A A transpose to give me the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of U. Uh, so, but putting that together, uh, we get that U is this three by three matrix sigma. We have the, eigen, the singular values of 2.201. Uh, notice that this is a upper, or sorry, a vertically a three by two matrix, and V is zero one one zero. Um, the pseudo inverse, when we take the pseudo inverse, it's actually, we're going to take the transpose and 1 over the items on the diagonal. So 1 over 2.24 is about 0.45, and 1 is just left alone, so we've changed the shape. Uh, now we can compute U transpose times B. We're going to multiply both sides by uh, U transpose. We get uh, this times B. When I multiply U transpose by U, it goes away. Uh, so I get uh, this vector here. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the pseudo inverse sigma, um, and I'm going to get 4, 0 uh, for the right-hand side. And then finally, I'm going to multiply both sides by v, um, and v times v transpose gives me back uh, the identity matrix. So this gives me my final solution that x is equal to 0 0.4. Just as a sanity check, you can go back to the normal equation approach for this matrix. Um, we take A transpose A, uh, V equals A transpose B, you get the system 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 0, 5, V equals 0 over 2, which of course gives us the same value of 0 and 0.4. Okay, one more application. Um, let's look at the following set of data X below here, which is a column of 2D values for, uh, for some function. Um, and we want to apply PCA using all of the eigenvectors. We want to give the covariance matrix, and then finally find the final components of x hat where we've rotated x into the principal coordinate system. So when we go to do that, uh, go ahead and work out your solution, all the elements, and then uh, come back and watch. So here's our solution. Uh, to find the covariance matrix, we first create a trans or x transpose x that gives me 12, 8, 8, 12. And from this, I can now uh, and I'm going to divide this by the number of points, 7, so that I have the average. This gives us the covariance matrix C of 1, 7.1, 1.14, you see here. We're now going to find the normalized eigenvectors of this. Uh, again, we need them to be normalized. So after we find them, we want to make sure that they're of unit length. Uh, and then uh, if you actually draw this, you'll see that this is actually consistent. V is now uh, basically rotation by 45 degrees. And as, after we apply that back to the transform points, we get that our transform points are now 
in this nice orthonormal space where the first component is varying uh, for a bunch of points and then the second component is varying only for those two points. And so we've now maximally separated how we can separate our data with both one axis and the other. Uh, and that's it for our SVD examples. Uh, if you struggle with any of these or have to look back in the book many times while we're doing this, I recommend you go back and try some of the practice problems at the end of the chapter for which there are answers at the end of the book. You'll have to work through the steps to see if you can get those answers.